What's up everyone, Lord Ryuji here. I wanted to do a real quick video about this nonsense that I'm hearing about gaming developers, um, more specifically I guess I should say game publishers, um, such as Game Informer and you know, all these entities that publish um, gaming related material. And how they state things like, oh, gaming is dead, and gamers are a dying breed, and I don't think that that's true. The only reason why I think that, that it's not true is because I myself have been gaming since I was about seven, I guess, six, seven, maybe eight years old. I've been gaming for a very long time, since the NES days, and... I think that if gaming was going to die, it would have already. I mean, there's been many jumps in technology, you know. I mean, we even had a video game crash in the mid-80s because of all the um, same games coming out over and over and over and over and... Holy shit, it's going to happen again. I wouldn't be surprised with that, but that's a different video for a different time. I'm trying to be a little bit funny there, I apologize. But the point is, is that I think this is really just like how cable companies are going after public television, trying to say that you can no longer use digital converter boxes and stuff to get free TV, because they want to have that money and force people to buy cable. I think that this is all this is. Gaming publishers, people that write for these magazines, people that publish these magazines, they're worried that they're going to lose their jobs, because we can just go to Google and type in destiny, see video reviews, see screenshots, see all this information that you used to have to buy in a magazine. See, back in the 80s when we had Nintendo Power, for an example, that was the only place to get tips and tricks and strategies and cheat codes and all that stuff for NES-based, uh, and even Super Nintendo later on and all that, for Nintendo-based uh, systems. But then, as time went on, Nintendo, I guess, kind of realized and got smart to the fact of, you know, there's game facts and there's hundreds of other sites where you can find cheat codes and strategy guides and all this stuff. You don't need Nintendo Power anymore, so we're not going to publish it. And I think this is all that this is. I think this is just a jab at gamers. Because I can tell you, as a man in my 30s, happily married, three children, and I go to work five days a week, that I just enjoy gaming. I like to sit down on my off days, play, play a game for a few hours. And it doesn't matter if it's a game like Gears of War, which is just, you know, go straight and shoot. Or if it's a game like Proteus, where there really is no story, and it's about the personal experience that you get out of exploring this island. I just enjoy it. It doesn't matter if it's on a Nintendo system or a Sega system. It doesn't matter if it's on a PlayStation or an Xbox. I have been gaming for a very long time, many decades. I've seen a lot of trends and I've seen a lot of things happen and that's the reason why I decided to start doing videos in the first place. It was because I felt like I knew a lot of stuff and I'd seen a lot of trends happen and usually Based upon those trends, I'd make a prediction that would end up usually, I'd say 75% of the time, end up coming true. But to say that gamers are negative or that gaming is dying is untrue. Because even if you don't count video games, we have tabletops. Dungeons and Dragons has been around a lot longer than video games have. I mean, the first video game system that came out, I think, was in 1974 with the Odyssey. But Dungeons and Dragons has been around longer than that. Even board games, Monopoly, Clue, and all that, they've been around way longer than any of us <laughs> have been around. So, and a gamer really is just somebody who appreciates games. I mean, you don't see it because it's in the hallway, but I have a whole shelf full of board games. You know? Just like you wouldn't say 
well, moviegoers are dead because there's Netflix, and so people don't go to the movies as much. Just the format changes. You know, I still go to the movies every now and then if it's a movie that I really want to see. Otherwise, yeah, I wait for it to come out on DVD. Or I wait for it to come to Netflix and I watch it. Same thing with games. I might not buy them within the first week that they come out, but eventually I'll get around to them. And eventually I'll play them and eventually I'll enjoy them. That doesn't mean that gaming is dying. I think it's just a stab at us. Yes, there are some of us out there who take it to the extreme. Anybody can do that. There are people out there who are obsessed with a certain band. They'll follow them city to city, watch every single performance that they do. That doesn't mean that music and music lovers and audiophiles, that they're crazy and music is dying because of whatever, you know, iTunes and all this other stuff. It doesn't mean anything. To me, it's just, you're losing your format. You're losing your business. You know? I mean, I get Game Informer once a month. And really, I might read one review and maybe read something about an upcoming game and trash it. Because honestly, if I want to find out about any game that's coming out, I can do a real quick Google search and be done. Oh. But that's just my two cents, guys. Just doing a real quick video. I don't think gaming is dying. It's been around for 40 plus years. I think it's probably going to be around for another 40 plus years. Just think that in 2016, we're going to have the 30th anniversary of Metroid. So it's been around a while. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I really just think that it's just gaming publishers people who write these articles that are worried about losing their job and figure they need to drag us through the mud and drag us down with us, drag us down with them. But I, for one, am not going to stand for it. I don't read those publications. I might glance at them, read a couple of articles, and then throw them away. I don't really care if they stay in business. Just like I don't care if we go to all digital and we start having it to a single box that has a subscription service for all the companies. It doesn't matter. The format may change, but the passion is still there. You know, I still have a love for Zelda, and it's gone from being a top-down game to a 3D game. All of those are good examples. Metroid, Gone from being a side scroller to a first person shooter back to a side scroller again. I enjoy them. And it doesn't matter if it's a Sega system or Nintendo, PlayStation or Xbox. I enjoy playing them. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And I don't think it's right to drag gamers and people, regardless of what they like to do for their hobbies through the mud. But again, that's my two cents, guys. What's your two cents? Thanks for watching.